Hey guys, if you're wondering what I'm doing here, just doing a little stress test for temperature. I was trying to verify that my uh, motor temperature measurements on the XR hub are correct on my desk. And uh, so in order to do that, I ran, I did a side-by-side -side comparison. First I did uh, the same run on the XR and looked at the temperature measurements there, and then I did the same thing on the Vesk Plus. And um, yeah, I um, basically verified that my temperature coefficients that I've put into the Vesk tool are accurate and the numbers I'm getting are realistic. So, uh, out of curiosity though, because this is such a gnarly test here, um, I have, I want to know, is my, is the fun wheel giving me the same kind of, or basically the fun wheel hub and the float wheel hub, this one here, this has a float wheel hub, they uh, are notorious for overheating and are not supposed to be as good as, as the um, XR hub. So I wanted to see how it actually compares. So I want to run the same test. The temperature is the same. It's maybe even a bit hotter. I'm doing it about half an hour later. No, it's about the same time as yesterday. So uh, we're having a heat wave. It's about 90 degrees outside or around 30 something Fahrenheit. I mean, 30 Celsius. Uh, also, on this Funreal GT, first of all, I, I, uh, I had a problem with my 18S battery. I think one of the cells is not doing good. So I took it out and put in my old 13S 2P battery in. And, um, and also, I'm running the pure Mahoney settings, basically Vestman settings, without any of my stuff. Whereas uh, yesterday I ran the, the vest using, using my hybrid firmware where I'm only using the Mahoney settings early on until about four to seven miles an hour and then my settings above that. So um, it might actually be challenging to, to finish this trail on the Mahoney settings alone, but we'll see. So, yeah, the course that I did, it's exactly one mile, or 1.1 miles, and it includes two very steep, uh, I, I'm repeating the same steep hill twice. So this, and actually yesterday, the only reason I did this first circle, where, which is not very steep, is that, the, um, that both of the batteries were full, and I didn't want to be getting some overcharge issues and having uh, tail drags on the steepest part of the trail. So, but now I have to repeat it. So, I'm a little worried with the pure Mahoney settings going down this trail. There is torque tilt back enabled, but I do feel the tail washing out a bit every now and then. So, I'm, and, and I kept the speed the same, around five miles an hour on the down and on the up. So we'll see. And uh, I had the temperatures in Fahrenheit on the other one. So let's switch that over. Come on. There we go. All right, also because it's a little hotter today, I think the uh, float wheel hub has a slight disadvantage because it, I started it slightly higher temperature. But in the end, it shouldn't make too much of a difference. But as you can see, it handles the downhill well. This was the steep part. Um, just so you know how steep it is on the stock XR, I had trouble getting up without being active, meaning sometimes pumping a bit or going side to side to make it. So I turn around here. 
All right, now the temperature should start increasing pretty quickly. Now also, the float wheel hub that I have here does have stator rate in it. So I, I did add stator rate here. And uh, so that should make up for some of the advantage that XR hub has. And basically, yeah, what we're comparing is the float wheel hub with uh, stator rate in it against and we made it. This is the tricky part. It rained like a few weeks ago and so it got all washed out and that's a tricky section here. But you can definitely see how the motor temperatures are already going up. And uh, the feeling I'm getting from the motor is that it's struggling. But actually I can accelerate here. But I won't do that because I didn't do that uh, yesterday either on the VES Plus and the XR. So, um, oh, the reason why it feels like it's struggling is because around four miles an hour, that is the um, sensorless transition. And yeah, so I would basically, when I'm just below four miles an hour, then I'm still running on hull sensors and uh, it runs smoother once it transitions to sensorless. So staying above four, oh, I went a little bit too high. All right, first run, motor temperature 130. That's uh, not great, but not horrible. Basically good enough that I can attempt a second run. And um, I mean, I expected it to be worse than the XR hub. But let's see if it is a lot worse or just a little. Now also you can see I'm riding flip-flops and stuff. It's because I know I'm not going fast and I've done this trail a couple times now and I have no reason to fall. And it's hot as hell right now, so I'm willing to take that risk. All right, and turning around, it's at 135. Looks good, I don't think we should be much higher than the XR, the XR, I think. Did I top out at 150 or was it 140? Maybe it was 140, so yeah, we'll see. Should definitely make it without overheating. Overheat, so it's 58 Celsius. Hey guys. Yeah. 21. This line I also did not make on the XR or the Vest Plus. But. All right. Temperature is 60. Yeah, the, the cutoff temperature um, is 80. And uh, actually, the way the cutoff is implemented is that it's a transition from 80 to 90, meaning it. Uh, proportionally reduces the max amps, which just means your nose will slow, um, slowly start going down and you'll end up getting a slow nose dip if you ignore the warnings that you get from my beeper or the app if you're running float control like I am right now. So yeah, we hit 150. And um, looking pretty good so all in all the float hub with stator rate in it is almost as good as a stock XR hub so it's not that big of a difference but the stator rate does make a big difference I bet I would already be at 165 or so without stator rate I did uh, some tests on that and I'm getting a full I was able to see a full 10 degrees Celsius difference um, on a one mile uphill with and without stator rate. So, haven't fully quantified it. Somebody else can do that, but I definitely know it's worth it. And I know it'll also make a big difference on the XR. 
So when I get a chance or when I feel like I'm getting tired of motors overheating, I will put fader right into my XR Hub 2 and my Vest Plus. So I have to say, the uh, oh, and also, I don't know if you noticed, but the uh, my air cooling works really well. The the MOSFETs are only at 137, and I believe the XR controller was at 159. Uh, the Vest Plus was uh, lower than that. I think 140 or something like that. So um, the Fun wheel with the um, running a higher KV motor, which I suppose which you would imagine would require higher currents to do the same climbing, um, actually has better thermals because of my air cooling setup. That I, if you're interested in that, I have a, made another little video that shows how I added the external heatsink. So, yep, 1.1 miles, and uh, we're done with our test, but I'd say that was pretty cool. So, what have we learned? First of all, it is really hot here right now, and uh, one-wheel motors, they heat up really quickly. We also learned that the configuration value is basically the VESC defaults, um, NTC 10K and 33AD beta value for the temperature sensor in the XR hub work out of the box. So the data that you get is accurate. What I've also seen is that plastic rail guards actually hinder uh, heat dissipation. So bare metal rails like this do work better than boards with the plastic rail guards. So keep that in mind if you're putting them on. I know I like to protect my rails. I hate when they get all scratched up, but it does affect your heat dissipation. Now we've also confirmed that the FUB 188 motors, um, like the Fungineers and the float wheel motor, they uh, heat up a lot quicker than XR motors or all the hypercore motors. But with stator rate, it gets pretty close. Now also, just keep in mind that it wasn't quite apples to apples because the starting temperature of the float wheel hub over there was higher than the starting temperature of the other motors. So that might have been a small factor. I don't think it's much. You can maybe add three or four degrees to the other motors if you want. But um, what we can definitely conclude is that stator aid works great. I will add it to my XR motor and then try the same trail again. And yeah, I can only highly recommend it. And do not use a lot. You just need a tiny bit. So one 10 milliliter um, syringe of that stuff is good for three or four hubs easily. But one other thing that I noticed um, in comparison to the FUB hubs is how quickly the XR motor cooled back down. We went from, what was it, 145 to 135 in 0 0.2 miles. So it cools down really quickly because it's really the slow uphills that are what's causing the, the heat up. And uh, as soon as you have a faster section, your motor will probably cool down. And uh, downhill, of course, will help as well. But slow, steep downhills also keep the motor warm because there's strong negative currents going through it. One other thing that I learned is that the stock XR controller heats up like crazy. It went to like 160 Fahrenheit in less than a mile. And um, both the VESC Plus here and the fun wheel over there, they're using the little Fokkers those are superior controllers. They can deliver more than 200 amps. So the currents that we needed for this kind of terrain were probably a piece of cake for it. Um, 
but the cooling mechanism in here is the same as the cooling mechanism in the stock XR. But, of course, we don't have plastic rail guards, so that gives us an advantage here. Now, the little Fokker in my front wheel stayed the coolest because of my patent pending, just kidding, um, air cooling system. So that helped a lot. And, um, yeah, so it shows that there's lots of different things that can affect heat buildup of your one wheel setup. Now, what else could we could we try to find out? What I would love to know is how the GT would handle the same terrain, the same course. And uh, I'd also love to try the Pint and Pint X for that matter. But um, that way we really get the full picture of um, what is a bigger factor. Is it just the motor itself? All the one wheels use the same hypercore motor or is it more the uh, design of the of the frame and everything else. That's all. Thank you for watching and see you guys next time.